Thank you all for having me. Thank you all for having me here today. I'm going to present our smartphone prototype, um, freehand manipulation um, portable. On the screen is a roadmap of today's presentation. I will now start with our motivation. As we all might have somewhat played augmented reality applications on our phones, these apps are not stranger to us. Here on the left is an IKEA Place app where a user places a virtual chair in the room. Another example on the right is a popular game, Pokemon Go, where users interact with a virtual Pokemon by swiping up the screen and to throw a ball. Notice that these interactions are all happening in a 2D screen. However, the virtual content were meant to be interpreted as a part of a 3D environment. This disjunction prompted us to wonder what could be an alternative way to interact with AR objects. Prior work indicated that freehand manipulation can be a candidate. Here I'm showing an example of people using freehand manipulation to directly change the scale of AR objects and move their locations in a head-mounted display settings. Prior work also looked at freehand manipulation and smartphones to explore the tracking issues, mm -hmm. performance relative to screen while users in a mostly immobile situation, and perception issues in smartphone AR without freehand manipulation. We want to explore what it takes to make freehand manipulation more practical on smartphones and creating an intuitive experience, especially when the user is fully mobile. And how can we accommodate for those issues? For this purpose, we need to create a working prototype and gather first-hand knowledge. What does it mean to be fully mobile with freehand manipulation? In real life, objects can be within reach or the red region animated on the screen right now or beyond user's immediate reach. It is animated in the blue right now. Objects beyond reach are inactive but can be made active, active when the user goes nearby. This mobility means users should be able to use freehand manipulation without any restrictions to a fixed location. We need also account for adjusting the imprecisions of grabbing virtual objects and change this mixed reality physics accordingly. Image on the left shows a hand grabbing a real object where a user gets plenty of feedback from the haptics, texture, and the material. In AR, these are non-exist, making it easy for users to overshoot, as figure on the right indicates. Further, rendering virtual objects with correct lighting, shading, and shadow helps to understand their relationship to the user. We can see the figure on the right gives more kind of perspective. Finally, we must choose the right type of hand tracking that is stable, robust for practical tasks. We opt for depth-based camera for their relatively stability under complex color backgrounds and lighting conditions. So, with all these considerations in mind, we implement our first prototype with a leap motion attached to the smartphone. A leap motion device has a dual camera that detects hand position up to 120 hertz. Because leap motion does not work on a smartphone, we connect it to an Intel computer stick that runs our script to capture data using interface Orion 4.0. To ensure portability, the computer stick is powered by a battery and mounted onto a portable case. We then deploy a WebSocket server client structure to allow for real-time communication. The smartphone runs a Unity scene with AR core to localize its position in AR environment and compute the incoming hand data for interacting with virtual objects. We now moving forward to describe the gesture recognition. We train a model to predict five different gestures using mo motion invariant local projections of fingertips. The slide here shows an example of such feature. When a user's hand rotates, the feature value or the red line here does not change and only changes when the finger crosses in. We trained 30 of these features for 16,000 samples and were able to achieve over 98% of accuracy for predicting the idle gesture, the palm gesture, the pain gesture, the fist gesture, and a pinch gesture. Since both Leap Motion's camera and smartphone's RGB camera intrinsic matrix are automatically calibrated by their Unity assets, we only need to care about extrinsic camera calibration. 
The video on the right shows a user with our interactive script to adjust the position of the opaque white virtual hands to overlap. The skeleton color here is deliberately made obvious for understanding the calibration process. In real time, it can be transparent or hidden. So far, we went over the main parts of the initial prototype. Remember, we create this prototype for identifying practical issues specific to fully mobile AR experience on smartphones. Inspired by experience prototyping protocol, we designed two guidelines and a series of instructions allow us to get first account knowledge. We recruited 12 students from a research seminar and each of them designed a content creation and a content manipulation task for their own participants. This way, we have a wide variety of tasks to understand the potential practical issues. After analyzing the report, we found that with freehand manipulation on smartphones, depth perception issues affect users in two ways. First, user hesitated to a distant object, as in indicated on the video right now. Then, after they moved to, to the virtual objects, these objects are still hard to grab. The video shows how a user struggle to find the right depth to the red virtual ball. Notice the user tried different grabbing strategies but unable to pick up the ball. Even at the right depths, we notice manipulation issues. Here on the right, a figure demonstrates what happens in a recessed grabbing when a user's hand reaches collision detection area but eventually fell out when the finger closes. Lastly, we found participants in general are unaware of the tracking limitations and their hand can be outside of sensing areas which cause failed manipulation experience. To mitigate these issues, we introduced four feedback mechanisms and an improved manipulation design. The first feedback is a progress wheel designed to mitigate spatial location issues. As users approach virtual objects, the indicator on the object completes and it turns to blue when the object is within reach. We designed a sound pitch based tech mechanism um, that uses a ray casting like technique to select virtual objects and emit sound. The technical details can be found in the paper. For dealing with objects within reach, we designed a highlight and haptic feedback. The highlight feedback helps to distinguish interaction states. When a user's hand reaches a virtual object, it turns green. When user grabs it, it turns blue. Similarly, when a user's hand reaches the object, the phone slightly vibrates and gives a hint of feedback. In order to mitigate manipulation issues, we redesigned picking up conditions. When the hand is near the object, the detection region expands to the center of the palm whenever at least two fingers are inserted. The blue dots here are for visualization purpose. They are not actually visible. So when the pinch is complete, the detection region shrinks. We can see how this technique helps to mitigate recessed grabbing issues. Occasional tracking errors and behavior noises are filtered with moving window filter so that accidental dropping of virtual objects are reduced. In the video, you can see the finger uh, temporarily in and out of the detection area as affected by tracking errors. And with the filter, we can get more consistent predictions. Here on the screen, we show the comparison with and without manipulation improvements. On the left, a naive implementation where a virtual object accidentally dropped with rotational movement and lost, tr lost tr due to recessed grabbing. On the right, you can see the object stays in the hand while the hand moves and rotates. Finally, we evaluate our feedback and manipulation design. The study contains with two tasks. The first task is picking up a distant virtual object. This task has two subtasks, one where the virtual object stays without moving, one where object moves randomly at 20 centimeters per second. We also recorded a case where a participant, participant picks up a physical dis distant object. Task two is the assembly of AR, op AR blocks into a virtual playhouse. We recruited 12 participants with average age of 23. Here's a video showing what happens in the motion last task. The baseline is a naive implementation. The baseline video here shows no feedback and manipulation 
redesigns were added. On the right is a participant using portable with visual feedback. The video plays now demonstrate a baseline condition where a user is trying to pick up a moving object without any feedback. Here is a condition with visual feedback. Here's an example of task two for building virtual houses. Participants need to assemble a virtual house from four pillars and one roof generated at random orientation. Participants need to align the blocks and rotate them with extra care. <clears throat> we show our results here. Portable's conditions are notice noticeably faster than the naive implementation. When a user approaches a moving target, the shaded area here indicates average standard error for all participants. Our results show portable helps participants to reduce hesitation towards a moving distant virtual object. Portable allows users to be more successful in grabbing virtual objects compared to naive implementation. The percent on x-axis indicates success rate and the y-axis contains combined conditions. For motionless task, portable is 20% more successful than the baseline. And the success rate is almost more than doubled in portable's moving conditions. And the arrow bar here indicates standard error. We rate score for complete air, completion of AR house, houses. Portable has an average score of 0 0.72, while baseline condition mounts to 0 0.48, a pairwise t-test T-test comparison shows that the difference is significant with p-values equal to 0 0.01. We compare the preference and helpfulness between baseline and each individual portable's feedback with a five-point Likert scale. We notice that baseline is neither preferred nor seemed to be helpful compared to the portable's condition. Sound is less pre preferable but still helpful compared to the baseline. We measure the overall cognitive load with NASA TLX, which is a self-reporting um, form originally used by, by NASA scientists to measure cognitive load, such as mental and physical demand. The x-axis here are the different categories in TLX form, and the y-axis here are the raw scores. The lower, the better. On this figure, we can see that portable's cognitive load is significantly less um, than the baseline in every measure. So the takeaway here is that we built a prototype to elicit practical issues when combining free hand manipulation with mobility on smartphones. And we made a set of visual and haptic feedback designed to mitigate perception issues and manipulation redesign to improve accuracy. An empir empirical study supporting portable's redesign mechanism in terms of mitigating issues mentioned above. We aim to raise popularity and research interest for free hand manipulation on smartphones and other handheld platforms, and thus open sourcing our project at portable.cs.bron.edu. And that is all my presentation, and thank you all. All right, good. We've got time for questions, so ask away. Um, thanks for your talk. I was wondering, when you did the user study, what were user comments on the haptic feedback? Since you get feedback on the right hand that's holding the phone, but you're interacting with the other hand that's in air. Sort of. Yes, that's actually a, um, there's a term called haptic retargeting, which sometimes you don't uh, need haptic on the hands as long as you have visual feedback that goes along with it. So the users actually commented very um, positive for the haptics. They think, um, I think the slide is show, like many of them think it's very useful, like mostly think, because like otherwise AI objects are, you don't have any clues why you reach it or not, even though it's not a direct feedback, but then it still gives a hint. I 
guess I'll ask a question, actually. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of just curious if you could comment on the uh, on, on uh, some of the long-term ergonomics of, uh, of, of this kind of project, because we know that uh, holding an arm in the midair is uh, right, tiring. Right. So you did some studies for a shorter periods of time, but do you, did you have any insights about longer periods? Yeah, uh, it's actually a very good question, because uh, um, the AR interaction, especially with free hand manipulation, is known to have the gorilla arm effect. Uh, where people's arm become really sore. So um, we actually had an artist come in, try to use our system to make a paint, like a paint in 3D. That lasted for an hour. So the artist was able to complete um, the drawing um, she was trying to do, um, but she did report some soreness with the arm, but then nevertheless was able to complete the task. Yeah. Very impressive. Okay. Thank you.